Good morning, Mia. Do you want to go for a ride in the car? Okay, you want to go downstairs? You want to go? Let's go. All right, you hang tight. I'm going to go take care of the chickens. Good morning, friends. It is a chilly, chilly morning here in Massachusetts. Um, I don't even know the temperature. Uh, let Mia hang out over there while I come over and uh, take care of the chickens here. Uh, let's see. I just got to get them some water before I head out for the day. But Mia and I are going on an adventure. Good morning, ladies. No, you are not allowed to come out of the coop. Hey, Rose. Sophia, Blanche, we got Dorothy over there. There's the remains of the pumpkin from last week. Uh, they're still kind of picking on it. Unfortunately, I didn't get the actual making of the chicken lantern on camera because my phone uh, did die while it was out here after a couple hours, just straight video recording. So I need a better solution for that. <laughs> so we're gonna go get some, the chicken some water and then we're gonna hop in the car. I'm gonna tell you what we're doing. All right, the chickens are all fed and it's time to go, but I'm gonna give you a quick little rundown of what's going on before I leave. And I'm gonna try to cobble this together into a coherent video, but I don't quite know what the day is gonna bring and if I'm gonna be able to film in the places that I wanna be able to film. But I'm going to look at a property today. I really did not expect to be able to do this for a year, maybe two but something popped up and I did have a family member who offered me a loan for the down payment um, if I found the right property. Now, this all may be for naught because said same family member is also, Mia, yeah, are you being an anxious co-pilot? You wanna get going? Okay, I will try to cut this short, I promise. She wants to get going. She's like, let's go, let's go. With my busy schedule and my backside injury, I haven't left the house in a while. So she's been at the house for a while and she's just so excited to be in the car today being my little co-pilot again. But yes, um, said family member is now kind of getting cold feet, doesn't know if this is the right property because as you're going to see, it's, it's a project. But there are so many upsides to this that I cannot resist going to look and then I may have a job on me convincing that this is the property. So I'll talk about that on the road. All right, so we are on the road. It's about an hour and a half drive, but I figured I would give you a rundown of why I'm looking for a property now. Um, well, mainly because I am a glutton for punishment and I love to look at houses that I couldn't possibly buy. <laughs> I have such a very limited budget and I do not want a big mortgage because, you know, I, I've had such housing instability in my life and I don't want a huge, huge weight just dangling over my head, waiting for something to go wrong, not be able to pay the mortgage and to lose everything. I'm, I'm not doing that. So I can't afford any way on my income to buy in my area of Massachusetts or potentially in any area of Massachusetts um, or most of New Hampshire. I, my budget is so very low. But this particular listing has been drawing my attention and when my family member offered that bit of down payment, if I could find an owner finance. Now, why do I need to have an owner finance? Um, my credit isn't great. It's not in the worst shape and it is getting much better. So in a year, that wouldn't even be a worry that I'd have. So I wouldn't be able to get a traditional mortgage until next year in any case. In an ideal world, I would be able to afford to live here, where my family is, where my friends are, my children are here. Well, one of my children is in New York City now. But also my theater company is here, and if you've been here for any length of time, you guys know how much I love my theater company. I'm having the hardest time 
leaving for that. Like, I can find another job. I can make trips to see my kids and my friends and my family. Um, you know, because just for affordability, I was thinking really the only place I could go and stay in day trip range is, um, is New York State. I was okay with that. I was totally okay with that. It's beautiful there. I like it. I like the vibe. So that wouldn't have been a problem. But if I could stay here, if I could stay somewhere near, because I can't do a five hour drive to come to rehearsals. So that would be no more dramatically incorrect theater group. Even though I'm not ready to pull the trigger completely 100% on my own yet, I am a real estate agent and a glutton for punishment, so I am constantly looking at listings. And I found this one an hour and a half away. And let me tell you, it needs some work. Um, I don't even quite know what I'm going to find when I get out to this property. <laughs> Let's get the bad news out of the way first, and then we'll talk about the good news, which makes me very excited. The house on the property is a derelict mobile home, and it is likely not salvageable. I mean, it might be able to be repaired, but the cost to repair it may not be worth it probably isn't worth it because someone broke in and stole all the copper piping out of it as well as ripped out the wiring. So for that, I'm thinking it's probably already more of a project than I want to take on. The good news is that I could have it hauled away. I could demo the small addition that's on it and have a new mobile home dropped in its place. That would take time. I probably wouldn't be living on this property for at least a year. But since I'd be staying with my parents anyway for another year or two until I could look for property on my own, I mean, what does that really change? Except that I have a property waiting for me that I'm paying down the mortgage on while I don't have a lot of other expenses. But that's the one big downside. It is definitely a project and I think that is why the family member is getting a little bit of hesitation is because it's not something that's going to be immediately habitable. It's going to take a year or two. It's going to be a project that's taken in many parts until we can finally drop a new uh, mobile home there because, you know, once we take the old home out of there, you know, what's the condition of the site, of the pad? But when you consider major downsides, that's really it. So now let's talk about all the upsides and the things that are attracting me to this property. Number one, like huge number one is the distance. This property is an hour and a half from where I currently live. Now, considering that once I move, there isn't really much reason for me to come down here all the way. My job, I already drive about half an hour, a little bit more to get to my job. To me, driving an hour is not really much worse. I drive 45 minutes or more, depending on traffic, to get to my theater group. And these are both straight up in the direction toward uh, toward this property. So I'm basically about an hour from both work and my theater group. I will drive an hour for my theater group. I already do drive almost an hour for my theater group. Uh, I will make that drive for my job too because I, I do make okay money for what I do. I can try to find another job, but I wouldn't have to is the point. Number two on the list that is very attractive in this property is the space. Recently, I had been thinking, you know, maybe I don't need to start right out on a nice sized homestead. I can find a property that's a quarter acre and I can have my chickens and a garden and I can work with that, you know, pay down my mortgage, save money 
and then move up to a bigger property and then move up to, you know, whatever needs to happen. You know, I don't need a big thing. I could start very small. I know plenty of people who homestead on a quarter of an acre. I could do that too. Could I grow all my food? Probably not. But, you know, I, I could manage and I'd be happy. If I couldn't have goats yet, okay, fine. That's just going to have to be a future project, a future dream. I'm okay with that. Can I have my chickens? Can I have my garden? I'd be happy to start there. But this property is 1.9 acres. Another plus is the backside of the property is a small river. Now, one of the things I'm going to have to check is, uh, hey, how high does this water come up when it rains in or when uh, all the spring melt is happening. Basically, if I did get this property, I would not build any structures like a goat barn or gardens and things like that until I've seen that water flow and I know where it's going to (laughs) go. Because one of the things you don't want to do when you're planning out your homestead and your outbuildings and all of that is to build a goat barn and then the river rises and the bed shifts and ooh, there goes your goat barn goat barn so you want to see where your water flows half the property is cleared half the property is trees so i kind of like that it gives a little privacy screen from one of the neighbors um, and then the cleared side is over um, on the other neighbor's side if i do buy the property i will show you guys a map Another upside to this property for me, it may not be an upside for others, is that it's on town water and sewer. That's actually a plus for me because I don't have to worry about um, issues with a septic system. The other reason that I'm actually spending the time to go look at it is that I've already spoken with the realtor representing the property And he said that yes, his seller would do an owner finance, that he does do them quite often. So I'm excited about that. He knows what he's about. I know what I'm about. And the agent really liked that I am also an agent because I knew the right questions to ask. I think I've covered all the bases. I'm gonna turn this off and I've gotta stop off for gas and a drink because my throat's getting all dry. And I will turn this back on when we get up to the property. So I'm here at the property and yeah, it was down like half mile of dirt road, but off of paved road. And I guess the uh, town actually does plow all the way up to um, this little circle back here. And then we we're just responsible for the rest of it. But all right, let's take a look at the property. First impressions, um, kind of yikes, but I'm willing to put in work. So I'm guessing all of this is part of the property. It looks like some big logs there that would have to be pulled up. And here is the mobile home, which actually from out here doesn't look horrendous. Um, This addition is terrible. Um... I did go peek in the door already and a cat jumped out and surprised me. I wish I had it on video. Um, This addition, yeah, this is going to get to, this is going to need to be torn down. Um, You can see it's been pretty damaged. The, uh, yeah, it's just been left full of stuff. I mean, even in, in the kitchen, So there's the floor. It looks like some of the flooring is coming up, but the floor is solid. Um, Yeah, you can see like all the food that was left. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so here's the kitchen. I don't know, guys. I think this is salvageable. I don't think we need to demo this. Um, there's a little squeak here in this floor, you know, okay, so we replaced some of the subflooring. Big deal. Clean, 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 scrub and paint. New appliances, because I'm not opening that fridge. Uh, let's go through here. This is probably, oh, this is a bedroom. 
yeah, here's the subflooring and okay, all right. So there's a half bath in here, which I'm gonna guess they stole the pipes out of that too. Um, guys, I think this is salvageable. I could work with this. Um, okay. I'm starting to have hope that I don't have to go through getting a new mobile home. Um, looks like they were using this as a bedroom. I mean, this needs a lot of work. A lot of work, but... I mean, that's got to be part of the addition. And so I'm going to use a flashlight in there. Um, what is this hiding? Uh, all right, they got a shower curtain up over this. It's a closet. Okay. It'll look like that's like a living room closet or... Oh, that's where the washer dryer went. Okay. All right. Okay. And then this is the back bedroom. Uh, it's the water heater. Okay. Um... Yeah, it's back there that I'm nervous about. Um, hmm. Okay, so two bedrooms. And then whatever this is that I'm sure has to be turned down, uh, torn down. All right, I'm going to have to stop the video because I need to... Um, I need to turn on a flashlight. Okay, so in that room, you really can't tell because it's so dark in here, but there is a wood-burning stove. And then you come through out here to the addition that was you know, falling apart. And as you can see, there's like insulation hanging all over the place and it's just a big wood. But I don't know, they must have maybe just used this for storage. I mean, they've got windows. It looks like they were going to make it or maybe who knows, it was just in its unfinished state used for somebody's living quarters because wow, it looked like things were pretty packed in there. But I don't know, guys, the more I see this, the more hopeful I am. Um, then it just goes out this door where there's no stairs, but, and here's a little shed kind of sitting area. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe this land isn't the perfect. Okay. Let's see if I can get back here. Because I thought it would be like level flat land and in the back. But now that I'm looking at it, if you go back here, it's all just, most of the land is scrub. Um, until you get back here. So, oh, there's a little island. Um, but that's the... Warner River. Hello, you're the kitty who ran from me a little while ago. Hello. Oh, aren't you a friendly thing? I don't know, guys. The, the cat is making this seem like a good omen. What a friendly baby. Hello, sweet kitty. Hello, sweet kitty. Okay, so there's the backside. So I would clear all this brush to the drop off um looks like a good amount of junk and trash hey kitty I need to walk this kitty is like become my new best friend here um yeah let's investigate the shed oh, you know what these are raspberries those are black cap raspberries most likely love them so all of this up to where they're parking their cars, and actually I think of some of where they're parking their cars, is part of this property. So this is a nice big area that would need some soil improvement, but I could garden here. Um, yeah, and the land goes all the way over here to this tree line where I'm going to assume it drops off to the river, but that means don't have to worry about flooding. Um, and then you've got this shed here 
of course, full of trash. But, uh, you know, this, this, this has the makings of a goat barn and a chicken coop. Um, I could do a lot with this. I could. That mobile home is totally salvageable. <laughs> Hi, puppy. I know you don't know me. Sorry. Um, yeah, so all of this, I think, to the other side of that plow truck is all um, part of this property. And then it does go over here a ways through these woods, almost to the other house. And I don't know, the way the land goes down, I wonder if that's really usable, but I wonder if I could turn that into pasture because it is this property all the way through almost to that other house. <sighs> Maybe I don't need as much demo as I thought. I like it here. I do. A quick inspection of the front. That is a metal roof that is fairly new and in really, really, really good shape. That, that excites me. So I don't think there's got to be issues with the roof if it's got that wonderful, wonderful new metal roof. So I didn't end up doing the second leg of my trip today, which was to a mobile home dealer near the property because after looking at that, I don't think I need a new mobile home. I think that is salvageable. I may take time to repair it and have to do it piecemeal little by little, but I'm pretty sure that after going through that, that is structurally sound and with some repair, i.e. the copper pipes have all been removed from the property. So it does need to be replumbed. And there are definitely some spots here and there that can use patching, maybe replacing the windows. But I think all in all, that's going to be much less expensive than doing a full on like demo. And because I'm gonna need permits for those repairs anyway, but rather than to get a demo permit and all the stuff that's going to go into that with having to demo it the cost of uh transporting a new mobile home and the hookups you know and all of that i really feel that that structure can be saved it's kind of on my heart to do something like that. I've always kind of wanted to pardon the uh, the shakiness of my camera. This road is, <laughs> and this isn't even the country road. This is the city road down the street from my parents' house because <laughs> I'm almost home. Um, one of my favorite movies has always been a home of our own. Uh, that's with um, Kathy Bates. And so I've always kind of wanted to take this rundown, derelict space that's, you know, like a shack and turn it into my comfortable home. So I very much want to do this. And since I've already basically got the seller to agree to my terms, I just have to convince my family member that this is the property. I've talked, um, I've, I've talked with a few investors as well because being in real estate, I've got plenty of opinions, knowledgeable opinions, and they're all like, yep, that's the property to buy. So I'm going to go to work on said family member and try to get them on board because if that happens, I mean, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic about the potential here. So I'm pulling into my driveway. And there we go. I'm at my house. I'm really excited. Ah. 
and uh, hopefully, hopefully this all works out. Thank you guys for coming on on my little adventure, and um, cross your fingers for me. Bye-bye.